Hello and welcome. I hope all of you are doing well. In this video, we are going to discuss this play written by Susan Hill, which is part of your Vistas textbook on the face of it. And you will find that the notes have lots of question answers. I think about more than 25 question and answers. So that pretty much will take care of every possible question that can be asked around this particular play. Now, uh, this is slightly longish, so we'll probably do it in two parts. Uh, just to give a relief, nothing, no other really, no other reason really. And it involves two characters, two interesting characters. And it's a play which involves a lot of dialogue. And it actually tells you a lot about the characters as we go along. So it essentially is the character of Derry and Mr. Lamb. Now, Derry's mother makes a brief appearance towards the end of the play, but she's not really a major character as far as the play is concerned. Derry is a boy who is withdrawn and defined. Withdrawn and defined. Sorry. Withdrawn. Defined. These are two key words which you should use when you are talking about Derry. If you get a character uh, sketch kind of a question for Derry. Okay, withdrawn and defined. He's rather bitter about the world. He's also a very lonely child. As a result of which, he's also very pessimistic. He doesn't have a very um, positive outlook towards life. He doesn't think of the world as a great place. Okay, and he's obsessed with his face, which is partially burnt. And he hates it when people show and express sympathy towards him. You know, so there is an element of defiance, there's an element of bitterness, there's an element of anger and annoyance that he doesn't like it if people are saying, oh, so sorry, oh, you know, you are burnt like that kind of thing. He kind of hates that sense of pity or sympathy which is expressed towards him. Mr. Lamb is an elderly gentleman who is the opposite of Derry. He's an extremely optimistic kind of person. He looks at the glass half full not at half, as half empty as Derry seems to do. He's also lonely, pretty much like Derry. He's also lonely, but he's in a happy space. See, it's always very important in life to find happiness. There's this fantastic quote, which I always believe in, that if you are feeling bored when you are alone, hmm, it means you are in the wrong company. Okay, so you need to enjoy, you need to develop the art of enjoying your own company or you should have music or books, anything to kind of keep your mind occupied. Just like Derry has a half burnt face, Mr. Lamb has an iron leg. So in that sense, he's physically handicapped, but it does not care too much about his disability, about the fact that he is physically disabled. And he has learned to accept it, unlike Derry, for whom acceptance, perhaps because of his young age, seems to be a little difficult to come by. Okay. So now with this introduction, I have explained to you the two characters. Let's get started with the explanation of the play. I've already told you what this is about. Okay, so what is the bond that unites Mr. Lamb and Derry? Scene one is in Mr. Lamb's garden. Now, there is the occasional, the words are not very difficult. Wherever there are difficult words, I'll explain to you, but essentially it's a simple play. There is the occasional sound of bird song, uh, bird song and of tree leaves rustling. That's the sound of tree leaves uh, rustling. Derry's footsteps are heard as he walks slowly and tentatively. Tentatively means that, you know, he's a little slow and he's a little unsure. Tentatively means he's being a little unsure about how to go about as he's entering Mr. Lamb's garden. He pauses, then walks on again. He comes round a screen of bushes so that when Mr. Lamb speak to him, speaks to him, he's at close at hand and Derry is startled. So that's the setting of the play. Mr. Lamb says, mind the apples. Now, mind the apples, crab apples. He's talking about crab apples out here. So, crab apples are small, decorative, wild apples, the kind of apples, and they have a tangy taste, tangy as in slightly bitter, like, let's say, like lemon, right? And they're a good source of vitamin C. 
Now, mind the apples. Have you seen in the metro rail? There will always be that uh, message written, mind the gap. That is, there is a gap between the train and the platform so that you need to be careful otherwise your foot may go into the gap and you may fall down right so similarly he says mind the apple so to warn Derry to be careful lest he should trip and fall okay what who is that who is there lamb is my name so mr lamb introduces himself he's in the neighborhood but they have not met before mind the apple so he says to him again be careful with the apples Crab apples, those are windfalls in the long grass you could trip. So they've all fallen and it's a windfall. You know, there are a whole lot of them who have fallen uh, of the crab apples, which have fallen into the on the grass. I there, I thought this was an empty place. I did not know there was anybody here. So Derry has ventured into the garden thinking that there is nobody there because he's not someone who is very used to engaging with anyone else. That's all right. I'm here. What are you afraid of, boy? That's all right. I thought it was empty, an empty house. So it is. So he says, yes, it is an empty house. Since I'm now out in the garden, the house out there is actually empty. Until I go back inside. So Mr. Lamb is kind of, you know, playing on words out there, right? He's trying to kind of have fun saying that, well, I'm out here, which means the house is right now empty, right? Whereas Derry was talking in terms of the entire premises, not just the actual physical house. He was talking about the garden and the house, right? In the meantime, I'm out here and likely to stop a day like this beautiful day, not a day to be indoors. So it's a beautiful sunny day and it's not a day to be indoors. Derry says, I have got to go. So Derry gets a little scared because he had thought he had ventured into the garden of the neighbor thinking that it was empty. Mr. Lamb says, not on my account. I don't mind who comes into the garden. Not on my account. What does this particular line mean? Not on my account means that do not go because of me. I've got to go. And he's in panic, right? So he says, don't, I mean, as if, you know, I should not be the reason why you should be exiting this garden in a hurry. I don't mind who comes into the garden. The gate is always open. Only you climbed up the garden wall. So see, Derry has not come through the right way. He has come through in a surreptitious manner, in a stealthy manner by climbing up the garden wall. So Derry says, oh, you are watching me. So he doesn't like the fact that he has been seen. Someone has spotted him doing something which was not the right way to do. You should idly enter through the gate or the door. Mr. Lamb says, I saw you, but the gate is open. All welcome. You're welcome. I sit here. I like sitting. I had not come to steal anything. So, uh, Derry is kind of, what does this indicate? That he's being defensive. You know, he's kind of, you know, explaining himself, even though uh, Mr. Lamb hasn't accused him of uh, lying or anything. One second. I It's on charge. One second. Okay, so he says that uh, I did not come to steal anything. So he's being very defensive. Even though he has not been accused of stealing, he's already explaining himself. Mr. Lamb says, no, no, the young lad steal. There are lots of young boys who come here to steal. Scrump the apples. Scrump means steal the apples. Okay, so steal and then he uses a different word. This also means the same. The, you are not so young. Okay, I just wanted to come in into the garden. So you did. Here we are. Then you don't know who I am. A boy, 13 or so, 14. So you see, I mean, young boys have that thing, you know, to tell the right age, the right class. Oh, you're in class three. No, I'm in class five. You know, that kind of a tone. But I've got to go now. Goodbye. Nothing to be afraid of. It's just a garden. Just me. So you see, Mr. Lamb wants company. He's kind of, you know, Mr. Lamb is seeking the company of Derry. While Derry is a little, uh, I wouldn't say hostile, I wouldn't say entirely timid, but he's very unsure of how to react. He thought he was coming into an empty garden where he is not likely to encounter, where he is not likely to meet anyone. And then when he meets Mr. Lamb, 
he is very unsure about how to conduct himself. But I am not afraid. People are afraid of me. Derry says, people are afraid of me. Okay, why should that be? Everyone is. It doesn't matter who they are or what they say or how they look. How they pretend, I know, I can see. So you see, this guy has a huge complex. You know, it's very obvious that he's extremely conscious of the manner of, the, of his looks. He's very, very conscious. So he says, I do not like it. I do not like it when they kind of, uh, how they pretend. So that's something which he's talking about. So he says, see what? What can you see? What they think. So he says, he, Derry is saying that I can read what is in their mind. And what do they think then? You think, here is a boy, you look at me and then you see my face and you think that's bad. That's a terrible thing. That's the ugliest thing I ever saw. You see how he's kind of building it up. Terrible, ugliest. Please note down these two words. Use it in your answers. That's what he thinks about what people think of him. But I am not. You think poor boy, but I am not. Not poor. Underneath you are afraid. Anybody would be. I am. I am. When I look in the mirror and see it, I am afraid of me. This is an extremely important passage because it tells you about Derry's personality that he says that I'm afraid of my reflection when I see my face in the mirror. So he's deeply conscious of his looks, his burnt face and the kind of reactions it evokes from people. So this particular passage by Derry, extremely important. Mr. Lamb says, no, not the whole of you, not of you. Yes, Later on, when it is a bit cooler, I'll get the ladder and a stick. So you see, Mr. Lamb has now moved on. He doesn't want to continue the conversation or have the conversation centering around his burnt face. So he says, later on, when it's a bit cooler, I'll get the ladder and a stick and pull down those crab apples, which are still on the tree. They're ripe for it. I make jelly. It's a good time of the year, September. Look at them, orange and golden. That's a magic fruit, I often say but it is best picked and made into jelly. You could give me a hand. That is, you could give me a hand means you could help me pluck those apples. What have you changed the subject for? People always do that. So Derry once again reveals his insecurity. And in fact, the right word out here for this is obsession. He's obsessed with his the fact that his face is disfigured. He says, why have you changed the subject for? So he thinks he has deliberately changed the subject because he doesn't want to talk about his face. People always do that. So it's not the first time it's happening to him. Why don't you ask me? Why do you, why do, you do what they all do and pretend it isn't true and it is not there? In case I see you looking and mind and get upset, I'll tell you, you don't ask me before you because you were afraid to ask. You want me to ask? Say so then. So Mr. Lamb is, you know, thanks to because of his age and maturity, it's almost like, you know, I deal with a lot of students. Some of the students are, they deliberately try to be rude because they are inwardly, they are being very insecure about themselves. They don't know how to conduct. And over time, you realize that that's the best way to kind of deal with them is to just have a conversation with them. Right, Because then you can kind of deal with their insecurities, their lack of confidence, their lack of maturity. You can do that. That's the role of an educator and a mentor as well and a life coach. So he says that, okay, you want me to ask? Fine. Because Mr. Lamb does not want to give the impression that that's important. I am dealing with the whole of you. You are obsessed with just this part. You think that everyone, because see, many, many a times, we think, oh, wo mere bare mein ye soch raha hoga. he must be saying, trust me, the world is too busy to be thinking only about you. The world is not obsessed about you. Everyone is on the contrary, most of the time self-obsessed. Okay, so we all think that, oh, he must be saying this about me. He must be plotting this against me. So no, everyone is thinking only about themselves. We are an extremely... Uh, self-obsessed kind of a human race. So he says, I don't mind being with people, any people. I should say to look at it, I should say you got burnt in a fire. So 
Yes, it happens. You had an accident. You got burnt in a fire. Not in a fire. I got acid all down that side of my face and it burnt it all away. So it was because of acid. It ate my face up. You know, it, the effect of acid on the face. It ate me up. Very powerful lines. And now it's like this and it won't ever be any different. So he's talking about a permanent kind of a scar. So the permanent scar and Derry is not doing anything to forget it either. And while he's not forgetting it, what he does on the contrary is to blame the world for not making him let forget. I mean, and not, not, not allowing him to forget it either. Okay, so you see the... Um, uh, the drawing which has been made, this is the elderly gentleman. That's the tree on which the crab apples are there. And on the left-hand side of this boy, you can see that his face has been burnt by acid. Mr. Lamb says, no, aren't you interested? You are a boy who came into the garden. Plenty do. I'm interested in anybody. Anybody who comes, I'm interested in that person. Anything. There is nothing God made that does not interest me. What a fantastic line. And a very positive line. There is nothing God made that does not interest me. Look over there, over beside the far wall. What can you see? Rubbish. Rubbish? Look, boy, look. What do you see? Just grass and stuff. Weeds. You know, the wild uh, kind of stuff. Some call it weeds. If you like, then a weed garden. That There is fruit and there are flowers and trees and herbs. So you see, he has generalized everything. So it's all about how, I mean, it's a beautiful life lesson. It's all about how you look at it. You may think, oh, there is a group of boys standing there, unruly, discourteous. But if you look at them as individuals, you may find that each individual boy A is different from boy B is different from boy C and is different from boy D. They are individuals with their individual personalities. But if you generalize them and say that they're all ruffian, they're all goons kind of a thing, you would not be able to discover the inner beauty in each one of them. Mr. Lamb is able to do that. He's able to look at them individually as flowers, as trees, as fruits, right? As herbs, all sorts. But over there, Weeds. I grow weeds there. Why is one green growing plant called a weed and another called a flower? Where is the difference? It's all life growing. Same as you and me. So it's all about, you know, this labeling that the world does, whereas everything is a living organism. We are not the same. So uh, there is being a little defiant, you know, very obstinate. I am old. You are young. We are not the same. You have got a burnt face. I've got a tin leg. Not important. You are standing there. I'm sitting here. Where is the difference? Why have you a tin leg? So suddenly this guy gets a little curious. Real one got blown off years back. Lamey lamb. Some kids stay. Lamey lamb means someone who is lame. Haven't you heard them? You will. Lamey lamb. It fits. Does not bother me, you know. Frankly speaking, and this is something which you should always remember, it does not matter what the world says about you. What matters is what you do in life. And I'm say, I'm kind of interspersing this with a lot of life lessons also. Okay, I hope it interests you more. But you can put on trousers and cover it up and no one sees. They don't have to notice and stare. So you see, Derry is in that terrible state of self-pity that you know you can cover it up that you have a tin leg unlike me where everyone will see the face and you know react in a particular way so he's trying to say that i am in a worse state than you he's he's wallowing in self-pity please use this word also wallowing w a l l o i n g in self-pity and he's doing another thing he's playing victim okay he's basically this this tendency is called being victimhood you know of you know valuing you know I to aise hu maine kuch bhi nahi padha mere to marks bhi nahi aaye tumhara kya hai tum to first aaye the tumhara to acha college mein admission ho jayega main are bevkuf kisne bola tha tumko nahi padhne ko 
right it's the same thing you know never have that victimhood kind of feeling but you can put on trousers so he's saying that you are better off you know your disability can be hidden mine cannot be some do some don't they get tired of it in the end there is plenty of things to stare at people will come and stare at it for some time then they get tired of it because there are plenty of other things to stare at why would they keep looking at my tin leg you know so he's very practical in his approach like my face like crab apple so you see there is reaction there is plenty of things to stare at ha huh, yes exactly like my face so he says no like the crab apples they can stare at the apples the, they can stare at the weeds they can stare at the spider climbing up a silken ladder or my sunflowers so he says they are things it's all relative beauty and the beast you know some are beautiful some are not so beautiful what's that supposed to mean you tell me you need not tell think that they haven't all told me that fairy story before so he's being very aggressive also and his aggression comes from a lack of sophistication oh it reminds me of some of our students it reminds um, you know it comes from a lack of sophistication it comes from a lack of maturity it basically comes from a lack of knowing how to converse how to communicate with people handsome is as handsome does right beauty you know handsome is what you know it should look like i mean that's what he believes beauty loved the monstrous beast for himself and when she kissed him he changed into a handsome prince only he wouldn't he would have to he would have stayed a monstrous beast i would change you know nothing will happen to me basically he's trying to say that nothing good will ever happen to me so that's what he's being extremely what was the word that i first told you and now you realize why is it that he's being extremely pessimistic in that way no you won't and no one will kiss me only my mother and she kisses me on the other side of my face so my he says no one will ever kiss me unlike the case of the beast which became a prince and even my mother who kisses me kisses me on my right side not on my burnt side and she does because she has to why should i like that i don't care if nobody ever kisses me but do they do you care if you never kiss them what girls pretty girls long hair and large eyes people you love who would let me not one who can tell he says kisne dekha hai somebody may allow you to kiss them i won't ever look different when i am as old as you i will look the same i will still have only half a face so you see a very strange kind of a thing that whole thing of people being sympathetic towards him has kind of led to a situation where he does not like sympathy but he keeps on being sympathetic towards himself you know being playing the victim all the time so he said so you will but the world won't the world has got a whole face and the world is there to be looked at so you see how he is looking at differently you know you are all the time obsessed with your own look but there is this beautiful world to look at why don't you look at the world so he says do you think this is the world this old garden when i am here not the only one but the world as much as anywhere this is also part of the large world does your leg hurt you tin doesn't hurt boy when it came off did it certainly when the leg was blown and now i mean where did the tin stops at the top so he's curious you know now and then in wet weather it doesn't signify sometimes in wet weather when it is winter or rainy season sorry it does hurt oh that's something else they all say look at all those people who are in pain and brave and never cry and never complain and don't feel sorry for themselves so he's talking about people who don't feel sorry for themselves without realizing that he is one of those who all the time feel sorry for himself i haven't said it and think of all those people worse off than you think you might have been blinded or born deaf or have to live in a wheelchair or be daft daft means being silly in your head and dribble you know that you would say all kinds of things so he's trying to say that you are actually better off than a whole lot of people you could have been blind or deaf or have to spend your life on a wheelchair and that's all true and you know it i won't make my face change do you know one day a woman went by me in the street i was at a bus stop and she was with another woman and she looked at me and she said and whispered only i heard her she said look at that that's a terrible thing that's a face only a mother could love 
that you know only a mother could have the feelings for a child who has a face like that and so you believe everything you hear mr lamb is saying do you actually believe everything you hear well it was cruel maybe not meant as such just something said between them he's trying to say that it was an observation that they kind of that woman passed on to the other person but he said i heard it and is that the only thing you ever heard anyone say in your life he means to say that why are you obsessed with the negatives why don't you look at the beautiful world and oh god this is so much like my life philosophy that you know why don't you look at the world which is also beautiful why would you obsess yourself with only the negative things in life and is that oh no i heard a lot of things so now you keep your ears shut so if you hear your negative things said about you keep your ears shut don't hear them you are peculiar you say peculiar things he i mean he is not very happy because he is not kind of agreeing with him he is not saying that oh god you know sad for you you know that kind of a thing you ask questions i don't understand i like to talk have company you don't have to answer questions you don't have to stop here at all the gate is open right you can leave any time yes but i have a hive of bees behind those trees over there some hear bees and they say bees buzz kind of sound but when you listen to bees for a long time they hum and hum means sing so they don't buzz buzz is an irritating kind of a sound buzz kind of thing but when you hear them for a long time you will realize that they actually hum there is a sense of music out there i hear them singing my bees so you see the big difference is a fantastic passage and a fantastic thing said by mr lamb that people may listen to the buzzing of the bees but when i hear them i hear them singing i hear them humming and that's a difference you listen i always one of my favorite lines which i tell my students is that focus on your music don't listen to the surround sound the surround sound is the noise the surround sound is what people are saying about you forget that you need to focus on creating your music because if you obsess yourself only with the noise around you you will never be able to take out time and concentrate and focus on creating your own brand of wonderful music and when i say music i mean your own life sculpting your own life but i like it here i came in because i liked it when i looked over the wall if you are saying me you would not have come in because he had presumed the house was empty so there he says yeah no no it would have been trespassing you know that i would have been trespassing that is getting into some place without uh seeking permission i don't like ah that's not why i don't like being with people so now derry is being very honest i don't like being with people near people when they stare when i see them being afraid of me you could lock yourself up in a room and never leave it there was a man who did that well mr lamb is giving him options that you know if you don't like being near people just lock yourself up in a room and never leave that room there was a man who actually did that he was afraid you see of everything everything in this world he thought a bus could run over him or a man could pass on deadly germs to him and he could die of a disease or a donkey could kick him to death or lightning could strike him down and he could die or he might love a girl and the girl would leave him and he would die of a heartbreak and he might slip on a banana skin and fall and people who saw him would laugh their heads off so he was afraid of a whole lot of things so went into his room and locked the door and got into his bed and stayed there thinking that that would be the safe place for him so there is curious now optrol is a young boy so he likes to listen to these kind of stories so he said forever yes he said for a while then what happened then mr lamb says a picture in the room inside that locked room fell off the wall onto his head and it killed him so terry laughs a lot so you see but you still say peculiar things but you peculiar to some what do you do all day well i sit in the sun i read books you thought it was an empty house but inside it's full books and other things it's full of books there is something you know i read this quote a few days back they say that a person who's never argue with a person who's television screen the television set at his home or her home is bigger than his or her books shelf 
right? You always will do well with a person who reads. Just a digression. But there aren't any curtains at the windows. Well, I'm not fond of curtains, shutting things out, shutting things in. I like the light. So you see another aspect that conveys about Mr. Lamb, that he likes, you know, an interaction with the world. You know, when you kind of close uh, the curtains, it kind of conveys that you are shutting off the world. You are shutting off the world. But he says that I like it open. So you are letting the outside energy come in. You are allowing an interchange of energy between the energy inside his house and the world outside, which is why he's so welcoming even towards Terry. He says, I like the light and the darkness and the windows open to hear the wind. Yes, I like that. When it is raining, I like to hear it on the roof. So you're not lost, are you? Aren't altogether. You do hear things. You listen. Well, they talk about me downstairs when I'm not there. What will he ever do? What is going to happen in this world? Nothing looking like that with that on his face. So once again, he goes back into his obsession that people talk about him. Lord boy, you have got two arms, two legs and eyes and ears. You have got a tongue and a brain. You will get on the way you want like all the rest. And if you chose and set your mind to it, you could get on better than all the rest. So if you actually applied your mind, you could actually do much better than anyone else. How? Same way as I do. Do you have any friends? Hundreds. But you live by yourself in that house. It's a big house too. Friends everywhere. People come in. People know me. The gate is always open because I'm a welcoming kind of a person. They come and sit here. And in front of the fire in winter, people come, kids come for the apples and the pears. Pears are another kind of fruit. I, I am sure you know them. And for toffee, I make toffee with honey. Earlier he spoke about making jelly with the crab apples. Anybody comes, so have you. But I'm not a friend. Certainly you are as far as I'm concerned. But what have you done to make me think you are not a friend? Well, you don't know me. You don't know where I come from or even what my name is. What should that signify? Do I have to write your particulars down and put them in a filling bo filing box before I can call you a friend? I suppose not. No. Okay, you are understanding, right? You could tell me your name if you chose and not if you did not. Well, it's up to you whether you want to reveal your name or not. Derry, only it's Derek. His real name is Derek and he's called Derry. But I hate that, Derry. But I'm your friend. If I'm your friend, you don't have to be mine. I choose that, right? Certainly. Um, you know, that I have the choice to make my friends. Um, I might never come here again. I, you might never see me again and then I couldn't still be your friend. Why not? How could I? You pass people in the street and you might not, you might even speak to them but you never see them again. It does not mean they are friends. Doesn't mean they are enemies either. Bhai Mere, why are you kind of thinking everything in the negative? You know, think of it as positive. They are not friends, but they are not enemies either, right? No, they are just nothing. People, that's all. People are never just nothing. Never. There are some people I hate. So you see, very strong words used always by Terry. That would do you more harm than any bottle of acid. Acid only burns the face. Now, what is Mr. Lamb conveying out here? That, you know, that would do, you know, the fact that you hate people, that you hate some people, that would do you more harm than any bottle of acid. Bottle of acid will completely burn you down. But if you kind of, you know, are full of toxicity, negativity, hatred, all these things will end up burning you from inside. That would do you more harm than just the burns on your face. Like a bomb only blew up my leg. That There is worse thing that could have happened. You can burn yourself inside. 
after i would come home one person said he would have been better off stopping in there in the hospital he would be better off with the others like himself she thinks blind people only ought to be with other blind people and idiot boys with idiot boys so he said there are somebody says somebody came home and said oh he should have been in the hospital because then he would have been with people similar to him with half burnt faces right here he's kind of sticking out like a sore thumb and he does not approve of that kind of a thought and people with no legs altogether that's right what kind of a world would that be at least there would be nobody to stare at you because you weren't like them so you think you are just the same as all the other people with burnt faces just by what you look like ah everything is different everything is the same but everything is different fantastic line what a beautiful line that we are all similar we are all human beings we are all homo sapiens but are you similar to me am i similar to another person no even you and your brother and sister would be very very different from each other right so we are all very different kind of people even though you are brought up by the same set of parents even if you brought even if you are brought up in the same house you spent your childhood together but you will be a very different person from your brother you will be a very different person from your sister how do you make all that all that out watching listening thinking i would like a place like this a garden i would like a house with no curtain so he's kind of now kind of beginning to understand what mr lamb says and thinks like the gate is always open but this is not mine everything is yours if you want it what is mine is anybody so he has that spirit of mr lamb conveys that spirit of sharing you know sharing is caring so i could come here again even if you were out i could come here certainly you might find others here there may be others who may be coming in through the gate as well even if i am not there oh well that need not stop you you need not mind even if others are there it would stop them they would mind me and when they saw me they would look at my face and run so you see it's not very easy you know he's constantly going back to the same starting point in a sense they might they might not you would have to take that risk so would they no you would you might have me and lose all your other friends because nobody wants to stay near me if they can help it i have not moved no when i go down the street the kids shout lay me lamb but they still come into the garden they make fun of me they call me names but they still come into my garden into my house it's a game they're not afraid of me why should they be because i am not afraid of them that's why not did you get your leg blown off in the war certainly so he was a soldier how will you climb on a ladder and get the crab apples down then well there is a lot of things i have learned to do and plenty of time of for it years i take it steady if you fell and broke your neck you could lie down on the grass and die if you were on your own i could you said i could help you if you want to but my mother will want to know where i am it's 3 miles home across the fields i'm 14 but they still want to know where i am people worry people fuss so that's the thing you know he says people worry parents would worry but he says they're fussy lot you know fussy is a negative kind of an emotion worry is a more in emotion which shows concern right so it's that sense it's a positive emotion go back and tell them it's 3 miles away you know i live 3 miles away i'm not you know in the immediate neighborhood it's a fine evening you have got legs once i got home they would never let me come back once you got home you would never let yourself come back you know it's up to you whether you want to come back you don't know you don't know what i could do no only you know that if i chose ah if you chose now i don't know everything boy i can't tell you what to do they tell me do you have to agree i don't know what i want i want something no one else has ever got or ever will have something just like mine like this garden i don't know what it is so he's a young boy he's not yet mature he doesn't know what he's really seeking you could find out how waiting watching listening sitting here or going there i have i will have to see to the bees those other people who come here do they talk to you ask you things some do some don't i ask them i like to learn so he believes in interaction he believes in in a conversation a conversation is always an extremely important thing to do you know you uh, 
you you con you converse, you communicate, you ideate. Uh, I don't believe in them. I don't think anybody ever comes. You are all here by yourself. So he doesn't believe there is anybody who comes there. So Daddy believes that this guy is a loner and he is miserable and no one would know whether you were alive or dead and nobody cares. So he's being a bit rude out here. You think what you please. All right, then tell me some of their names. What are names? Tom, Dick or Harry? I'm off down to the bees. So he says, how does it matter what their names are? I think you're daft. Daft means silly, crazy. That's a good excuse. What for? You don't talk sense. Good excuse not to come back, to call me silly and not to come back to my garden again. And you've got a burnt up face and that's other people's excuse not to interact with you. You are like the others and you like to say things like that. If you don't feel sorry for my face, you are frightened of it. And if you are not frightened, you think I'm ugly as the devil. I am a devil, don't you? Mr. Lamb does not reply because he realizes that, you know, sometimes it's silence is better than talking. You know, when people are being, in a sense, hostile, sometimes it's better to pause the conversation. Like when some people on YouTube, especially, you know, they end up abusing. I always decide not to converse because you cannot converse with someone who is not following the norms of a polite conversation. Always remember this even in your professional life. You know, there are certain things when you need to draw a line saying that I am not going to accept this kind of behavior. So if you are going to do it this way, it's not acceptable to me. So I will not engage with you. He has gone to see his bees. No, you don't. I like it here. So, you know, he's confused. So he's trying to say that I like it here. He wants to stay there, but he's also being a bit, a bit confrontationist. I'm going, but I'll come back. You see, you wait. I can run. I don't have a tin leg. So he's trying to kind of be rude to him, you know, trying to say, you know, I'm better off than you. And he runs off. Mr. Lambs to himself they are my dears that's you seen to are ah, you know you all know i will come back they never do though not them never do come back and he's trying to this thing they never come back they all say they will and uh uh you know they say they will come back but they never do let me continue in the same thing because i think it's just another couple of pages right let let me finish it off scene two it's a short scene at Derry's house mother you think I don't know about him? Now they are talking about Mr. Lamb. You think I haven't heard things? Derry says you should not believe all you hear. So now he's trying to kind of talk almost like Mr. Lamb. He has been influenced by him. Uh, been told, warned. We have not lived here three months. and But I know what is there to know. And you are not to go back there. So they have been there only for less than three months. What are you afraid of? What do you think he is? An old man with a tin leg and he lives in a huge house without curtains and has a garden. And I want to be there and sit and listen to things. Listen and look. Listen to what? Bees singing, him talking. So you see, he's not talking about bees humming, uh, buzzing. He's talking about bees singing. The difference, he has been influenced by the talk of Mr. Lamb. And what has he got to say to you? Things that matter. Things nobody else has ever said. Things I want to think about. Then you stay here and do your thinking. You're best off here. Do you stay at home? I hate it here. You can't help the things you say. I forgive you. It's bound to make you feel bad things and say them. I don't blame you. So the mother knows that he's always in this very negative uh, frame of mind. It has got nothing to do with my face and what I look like. I don't care about it. And it is not important. It is what I think and feel and what I want to see and find out and hear. So he's saying that, you know, it's about my outlook. It's not about my face at all. And I'm going back there only to help him with the crab apples, only to look at things and listen. But I am going. You will stop here. No. Oh, no. Because if I don't go back there, I will never go anywhere in this world again. So for for him, for Derek, the, the garden... And Mr. Lamb symbolize the world. For him, it is important for him to look at it, look at the world, look at the world differently. So what Mr. Lamb has taught him is that the world is actually a better place if you do not put blinkers on your eyes. If you are able to look at it differently. So he runs away. Scene 3 goes back to Mr. Lamb's 
garden. Steady, that's it, got it, that's it, more apples fall. And again and again, the ladder falls back, Mr. Lab also falls down. The branches swishes, you know, the sound of the branches creaks and then silence. Derry opens the garden gate, still panting. So while he has come, Mr. Lamb has just fallen off the ladder. Derry, you see, you see, I came back. You said I wouldn't. And they said, but I came back. So he's trying to prove a point that, you know, he's the master of his own words. He will decide what he needs to do. Mr. Lamb, Mr. L you have. And he kneels. It's all right. You fell. I'm here, Mr. Lamb. It's all right. I came back. Let me, Lamb. I did come back. Derry begins to weep because Mr. Lamb is no more. And with that, the play end. I hope you have understood. I hope you enjoyed the larger messaging of the poem, of the play. I would want you to go through the question and answer so that you will find it easier to negotiate any question that comes from this particular play in your examination. Any doubts, please ask. Tata, bye-bye.